What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. Of course, I am Tim Geddes and I am joined by the new face of PAX East, Blessing at Aoye Jr. Good day, Tim. The big daddy himself, Greg Miller. See, all right. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Does it have two different things? Inside the document, it says that. Oh, so that's on here. It's not crazy, crazy that, buddy. That's not crazy. We're trying Ooh, to. That's gonna be ah, fun. it's available on the second date. We thought it was. There we go. Tim, everything we, we said it. before that, flip flopping, right back. We're flipping, we're flopping, flip, everybody. Flip, How does flip, that flip, look? I love that you went deep on that, Greg. Good job. The other face of PAX East. Snowbike Mike. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me. Uh, shout out to me and Bless going to PAX East this week. If you're listening, uh, we'd love to see you there. So come say hi. Multiple opportunities for everybody to show up and see the boys repping kind of funny out there. We got Bless hosting kind of funny game showdown for the first time live in live. front of a, a not studio honest audience, but a panel audience. A theater audience. A theater audience. 7,000 screaming fans. That's what it's going to be. YouTube That's theater. what it's going to be. That's going to be theater. you. Okay. You screaming fans out there. Two theater. Uh, this is going to be Friday, March 22nd. If you're at PAX East, you should be there. 1 p.m., the Albatross Theater. Uh, want to talk about that a little? Yeah. I mean, we got um, our full list of panelists that I am bringing up. Uh, I can't find it, but I'll say it out loud, right? I'll say it. <laughs> what, we got me hosting it. We got Snowbike Mike in the Are there three people on it? How can <laughs> you yeah, not keep it? There have been changes and shifts, so I'm like, fuck, who's still on it? So it's me. It's Mike. It is the one and only Iffy from Dropout. You know him from awesome. Um Actually, and you know him formerly of Roosevelt and plenty of other things. He's going to be there um, you know, competing in the panel. We have Jared Petty showing up from Limited. Boo! You know him previously from Mobile Gamer like, Bullshit. Yeah, Mobile Gamer Bullshit. Kind of funny, debatable. Uh, and then finally... We have our third contestant, Jeff Grubb from Giant Bomb. Boo! And so it's going to be a jam-packed panel. It's going to be very fun. And I might have some shenanigans. I love it. So yeah, he'll be there. Mike, of course, will be hanging out. I will helping be causing out. a lot of shenanigans in the audience, yes. <laughs> but that's, that's not Mike. the only reason. Oh, go for well, it. I do, I, are you good to score keep? Yeah, we will, I ask you this. we will score keep for you, Bless. You need to remember it's <laughs> me we? and the audience, okay? We will be there for On you. Games you Daily today. I'm going I to give you. On Games Daily, he games. said he was probably going to pass the paper to someone in the audience. Yeah. Score for me. Score I'm going to make sure people feel engaged. They're going to be part of it, and we're going to have fun. Round one, Becky's going to be keeping score. Then number two, oh, Kyle's going to keep score. No. I'm going to bring the mic to him. We're going to get people involved in this. Becky's and they're really gonna good love at counting. It. Don't worry. Becky, the okay, people are going to love it. Oh, well, everybody, it's sure to be a great time. And if you can't be there, it's okay. You can watch live on uh, the PAX Twitch channel. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. But that's not the only reason that the boys are at PAX. We have not one, but two very official, very important, extremely cool panels that they're each hosting, uh, starting with Snowbike Mike hosting the Grounded PAX East panel alongside Obsidian. This will be 2.30 p.m. Eastern in the Albatross Theater. Uh, and then you can also watch online at twitch.tv slash packs too uh, and then blessing will be hosting the cyberpunk 2077 phantom liberty panel uh, at pax east alongside cd project red you can join him in the pax east main theater on saturday march 23rd at 3 30 p.m uh, eastern time and if you can't attend in person you can watch that on the main pax east twitch channel you excited i'm so excited you excited mike it's a big honor i'm very excited you guys are going to crush. Everybody. We get to celebrate support. grounded. I got the yeah. easy one. He gets the tough one. I, got I get the, the main one. theater. I hope Idris shows up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that all out of the way, all of that fun housekeeping, obviously GDC is going on right now. So we've been going playing a whole bunch of games. We're going to be talking about that throughout the week in different places. Um, but we've already done so much cool stuff. We just did the uh, spring game showcase. We collaborated with the mix. Uh, there's two pieces to that that I would love for all of you to go back and check out if you weren't able to watch them live last Friday. We did a showcase with 60 plus games being shown off. It was absolutely awesome. So many of them looked great. And then so many of them we got to actually play on the follow up Monday stream that we did where for a whole bunch of hours. I don't know what the final count was. 10, something like that. 10 hours. We're live stream six, six, 15. six hours. <laughs> we were playing so many games with the amazing indie devs that came through to the spare bedroom. And honestly, it was an absolute blast. The VODs up. You can check out so many different games, so many different cool things going on. Um, yeah, go support it. Wait, what, it what game is this? Because this looks cool. Project, Project Tower. Tower. Tower? Okay. Yeah, this game's cool. This looks rad. It looks yeah. like uh, Returnal. Yeah. The way that this stuff shot sideways, you know? Yeah, like shoot. yeah. working with the mix was uh, an awesome experience. We've loved them for a long time, and they've loved us. And so, you know, to do basically what we did last year with the showcase uh, throughout the years, what? <laughs> no, just the last thing that happened in that video, it turned into, like, a plant. 
Yeah, what about it? What about it? That was, that was crazy, crazy, dude. It was out of nowhere. Oh, Holy Mario God. fucking eats a mushroom, becomes some kind of walking lizard. Nobody bats an eye. This guy fucking turns into a shrew. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever turned into a lizard, but all right. Dude, talking about the uh, the stream we did, though. Yeah. Um, I, we always play a lot of really cool games, and like there's, there's always ones that pop up, like Pepper Grinder. So awesome. Yeah. So much fun. We had a, a big... Uh, a gimmick there where we actually played with a, a real pepper grinder Amazing. that was attached to a drill and it was wild. That was the controller. Um, Bless had a lot of fun with that and it was best time of my life. so much power. <laughs> um, but this game, Anton Blast, Bless, I can't stop thinking about it. Oh, yeah. I got my eye on this one where I'm like, this, it might be the most Tim game ever made. Oh, so yeah. it was a great time uh, playing it and uh, I can't wait for it to come. I, I, I believe it's going to come out when it's ready. You know, and they're yeah. talking about 2024. I believe it. I believe it. Don't I mean, it, it, it feels like it's already ready to come out. Mm -hmm. so Anytime you meet one of these it. indies, don't believe a goddamn word out of their mouth when it comes to release dates. Well, what, 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 they over scope. Tony. They keep going, and God bless them for doing it. I mean, he's straight up said he's just like, we're not like, I don't care if it doesn't come out this year. Like, we're putting it out when it's ready. He's yeah, like, this should, yeah. this need, needs to be perfect. So I'm like, I love that. I love that. You know what's crazy is that like, but during the stream, there was like a dude that came in, and his name was Anton, and he was wearing like a Sonic the Hedgehog shirt. Yeah. And I very much assumed that he was the Anton Blast guy. Uh huh. Because I look at Anton Blast, I look at this guy Anton with a Sonic shirt, and I'm like, sense. oh, that's you. Yeah, you're the Anton Blast guy. So I just dap him up. I'm like, hey, hey, dude. You're very excited for your day, for your game. Like I'm looking forward to it, or whatever. And then like we sit down, and Tony sits down with us, and I'm like, "You're not Anton. You're not Anton." What was this weird is, is that Anton. Anton came on after Anton Blast. Yeah, yeah, he did. And, and so I was when like, they got there, I was there for the outside when they got introduced, and he was like, "I could make a joke about our game name, but I won't." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, for me, you know, you mentioned not being able to stop thinking about it. I know this is uh, one that the boys were not able to stop thinking about. Roger obsessed. This is Sulfur, right? Uh, obsessed with Sulfur. He the, it, when we announced we we're going to do the showcase he hit me up and was like you need to get these guys on there uh but me personally uh children of the sun uh, another devolver game the one that came on after uh we did pepper grinder where it's the you got the one bullet and you got to kill the pe people then spin it around and get the bullet over there to get the next person i was Ooh. not great at it in that initial thing kevin gave me a lot of understandable shit for it uh, but it was one of those of like I can't wait to play the final product and do like the perfect run on every one of those and get the bullets where they need to be. And another one I want to give a shout out to is Rugrats uh, Adventures in Gameland, mm -hmm. which is like the mix themselves are uh, publishing this or yeah, or, just in all the yeah, yeah, which is so cool and it is awesome. It you can switch between uh, modern graphics or like OG like NES graphics. The game's playable on NES, which I always love when that stuff yeah. uh, works. There's a uh, eight bit style music, but then there's also like more uh, modern music. You can switch on the fly, and the amount of inspiration this game takes from like classic NES games I was very surprised by there's a mechanic like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the Konami one where you control all four of the different babies and they each have their own like instead of having different lives you have the four babies and once they all die then you get the game over mm. um, which I'm like oh that's really cool they all have different kind of abilities just like Super Mario Brothers 2 where some of them can jump a little higher and float some of the, like it's straight up the Mario 2 powers so like Peach's type of glide Luigi's like weird floaty uh air jump toad can dig faster and it's just like mario 2 there's the whole digging down into the uh the sand and um this is finding awesome. secrets and puzzles and everything and i was just like wow this oh is oh my gosh it is a lot it's a lot better than i expected it to be so and you're saying it's a lot better than you expected it to be when none of the controllers worked and the keyboard was inverted for some reason yeah that was the the biggest problem is, is I, <laughs> we couldn't get a controller to work so i did have to play on a not a mouse and keyboard just a keyboard mm. and with my hands kind of uh flipped but you know what still had a blast we also had a game boy advance game that was pretty lit shantae advance. what a world we live in i know man rugrats a Come game on. boy advance game a multiplayer sims game what a great world. What a great world. Uh, and you know what? The world's great because of video games. And we like to talk about video games on this show, the Kind of Funny Games cast. Each and every week, we get together to talk about them and all the things we love about them. You can get it live if you are get if you get the Kind of Funny membership. You also get it ad-free, and you get a uh, daily exclusive multimedia experience, Greg Way. Um, shout out to our Patreon producers, Um which for some reason I don't have here. We're falling apart at the seams every single No, Is it the same month? It's uh, Kieran Hovasapien. Thank you. Delaney Twining. Mm -hmm. Carl Jacobs. And Carl, Carl Jacobs. Yes. Nice work. There, I don't think people can com comprehend how complicated the schedule is right now. Yeah. And I mean, like, we did the stream all day yesterday for, as Tim said, 15 hours. Uh, and then today it was you guys shot down to do demos. Me and Mike did Games Daily. Then went down to do different demos. You showed up at our demos. Then we came back here. We just did WrestleMania ranked for the week. Then we immediately are in the like in that. That's the rest of the week. The studio is booked back to back to back to back. And I just had to scroll down. They were right there. 
He just I nailed it. Ready. They were right there, everybody. <laughs> he just wasn't ready. But anyways, enough about that. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays and Robin Hood, but we'll tell you about that later. We got to talk about it. Dragon's Dogma 2. Blessing, you've played every single second of this game. You've beat the hell out of it. You platinum did. Is that correct? That is not correct. Okay. Oh. How much have you played of it? Uh, I played about seven hours. Uh, so this is a game that we got about a week ago. Um, of course, it's been a very busy week with GDC, with the the mix showcase. With um, I had a trip to LA last week, uh, and so like this is a game that I wanted to sit down with and put in so many hours into and come here and talk about it because the fervor for this game, the excitement for this game online, seeing the previews for it have gotten me more and more excited. Let alone like the preview that I did uh, some time ago, where I came away from it being like, okay, like you know, I can kind of see uh, where they're going with it even though there are parts about it that feel kind of old feel kind of archaic i think there could be promise here uh playing seven hours of it so far i am not nearly deep enough to feel like i can have like a final opinion on how oh god no 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 no. yeah like this is a game that i'm i still feel like i am so early i still feel like i'm in the beginning hours i still feel like i'm in the beginning of where my uh vocation is um i I have like the fighter vocation like the most default one that i could choose yeah i did did fighter too (laughs) yeah um and so seven hours in i started to take notes because i knew we're going to come in here and give our impressions and what i find is that most of my notes are complaints (laughs) most of my notes are man this game feels Mm -hmm. archaic like i'm surprised that there's no fast travel i'm surprised there's no uh lock on i think the quest structure can be very unclear. The story isn't really hitting for me so far. Um, the You're playing with like a group of pawns, which is basically like the companions that you play with. You How have, many are you playing with? I got like a full party of four. So it's okay. me and three other companions. Yeah. And I'll get to that in a second because that is actually a fun thing there. But, you know, you make you make one companion and then you party up with like other companions that are that belong to other players or Capcom might have made them. Um, but yeah. like I'm running with a, my, one of my guys is from Beans. Beans got games. I'm like, hell yeah. Uh, yeah one yeah, of my out. guys is uh, Mitchell Saltzman. So, uh, nice. Yeah, Pawn, <laughs> who is actually Kratos. Oh, so that's, really good, like, that's dope. <laughs> and like that, that's going to get into some of the stuff I'm enjoying. But yeah, like you're playing with, with you, like your created characters and then a set of created pawns. And so there's a lot of canned dialogue and it feels like I am playing with a set of avatars as opposed to a mm-hmm. set of characters. Um, and then like there's performance where the frame rate can dip, uh, especially in busy areas. But even when you're out in the open world, I am uh, kind of bummed out that there's not a performance mode. Like I wish I could mm-hmm. be playing this at a, at a smooth 60 FPS. Um, all of that said, like those are all negatives. I still am in a place where I kind of want to give this game the benefit of the doubt because the at the moments where I'm having fun, I am like, oh, this is really rad. You know, I spent I've spent a lot of my time in this game running around with my party. So it is me. It is the uh, the spawn that I made, which is Io uh, after Io Edaberry. Uh, it is uh, Kratos by Mitchell Saltzman, and then there is Taylor Swift that is made by somebody. I don't what know, a crew! It's not me. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I have a Taylor Swift, and so it's like. Us four running around the open world, and it's us going from point A to point B because the the quests are as simple as go over here and kill some things, like you know, free these people who are in a fight with some goblins. <laughs> and so I'm in the open world. I I am on my way to a destination. On the way, I run into a group of goblins, fight them, take them out. Cool. On to the next. Keep running. Run into some lizard men. <laughs> fight these lizard men. <laughs> take them out. Cool. Oh man, there's a cyclops. Let's fight the cyclops and. The more I get into these fights, the more I find that like I really, I really just like fighting in the game. I really like kind of the process of going out in the open world, questing. All right, let's fight some stuff. Hell yeah, XP, and then I move on to the next one. Um, I will say the, the uh, fights can be kind of novel because you're fighting a lot of big creatures. The Cyclops, for example. Oh. The strategy with it is very Shadow of the Colossus-like, where I will jump to it, press R2 to grab onto it, and then climb to the top of the Cyclops and then start to, like, stab at its eye. Like, this uh, Cyclops you see right here has armor on, so you can't, like, stab at its eye the same way, so you kind of have to switch up your your strategy. But stuff like that I think is really cool and separate this game out from a lot of other just open-world action RPGs that I'm playing. Um, But, Yeah. yeah, so far in these early hours, I can tell that I am so far from the meat of the game that it's hard to form an opinion. I, the strongest opinion I have so far right now is that I think a lot of people are going to start playing this and in the early hours be like, what the fuck, and then drop off of it. But I think there's a hardcore nature there that is going to appeal to people. Is there a HUD or is this just a, a trailer? There is a HUD. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I'm probably one of those people who will drop off early. Uh, I started this up as well. You know, you talk about y'all, you're gallivanting. I was, of course, in New York last week and, of course, before that, prepping for the GDC stuff. And now it is GDC, yada, yada, yada. I came back from New York um, Friday, uh, booted it up that night and was like, okay, 
I've heard everybody in the office be meh on Rise of the Ronin. That's off there. That review, that embargo is coming up this week. It's going to be PS I Love You, right? I was like, well, Dogma is first. Let's jump in there. And hopefully, like, what you know, you came out of that preview talking about it in a way where I was like, okay. And then the previews I posted from like Destin and GameSpot and all those people were like, okay, like this could be there something for me. And I, I'm even less than you. I, 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 cause what happened is I think I put two hours in maybe a little bit less, we'll say. And it was one of those things of like, oh man, I do like the combat. Yeah. The combat does feel good. Even from the very beginning, them teaching you R2 is to grab onto things. Right. I was like, oh, even that is like different enough from so many of the other combat systems we know so well that I was like, okay, I'd love to see where this is going to go and how wacky they'll get with it. Right. Even watching there with the different weapons and all these different things they're using. But I'm finding the world so uninspiring. Like, mm-hmm. it is one of those... Cl- this is a Greg thing of just, in general, like, the big renaissance mythical shit. Like, it, you know, thou art. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, they all know, speak like Shakespeare. Yeah, you know what I mean? And back to your point that everything sounds canned. I don't think lip syncs are good. The presentation isn't great. And I think this is so... Uh, pitch perfect with what you previewed the game when you were like it feels like a ps3 game right that's the last time we saw dragon's dogma that's what this feels like and i definitely get that vibe and it is the little things of not having a lock on and i understand of course not every game needs it they're doing their own combat thing yada 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 but still it just doesn't feel great in that aspect i don't like the slashing and then they move and i'm slashing a tree now but then i'm getting uh, two goblins are getting behind me to get in my shit you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and then yeah, the questing, like I can, I, as I started to go and explore, like okay, cool, and it was like, all right, yeah, I, I, I love XP, I love knocking on the quest XP. log and doing all these things. I'm gonna, and it's, just, I just didn't get the rhythm I wanted out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know the right terminology for it, right? But everything looks like my created character. You know what I mean? Mm, everything yeah. has that blandness to it, where it's just like, I, it's it, it, usually when I have a, a created character I don't like, it's like, well. I didn't more face more for I did too much of it and it doesn't match the rest of the things I should have stuck with a template whereas this one my Diana of Themyscira right like she just and then everybody else just and I'm, I'm talking to an right. actual NPC and it's like ah. yeah and like it's cool to have the companions from other people popping in right the vocation stuff seems deep and there's a whole bunch of things but I was so like man this is not hitting the way I wanted to and so then to pre you know to preview P.S. I love you. I was like, oh man, well, let's try Rise of Ronin. And my expectations, I think, were so low from how everybody talked about it here. I'm having way more fun with that, but I'll save that for P.S. I love you. Oh, little tease there. Mike, what about you? How much Dragon's Dogma 2 have you played? I've played the opening hour. I am currently on the Rise of Ronin team, so I'm looking at that over this. Uh, but I didn't love what I played. I picked up the mage. I went with the wizard build. And when we talk about no lock on, the moment that I ran into. Harpies that were up in the air. One of your earlier spells is a firebolt. And if you cannot find the harpy in air and be able to throw a firebolt at it, you are going to be missing a lot. And the combat really felt like a drag to me. That opening sequence was very cool when you have the climb onto this larger enemy, kind of scale up the side and be able to do some of my magic spells up close and personal was cool. But the moment that we added in an extra layer of trying to aim what I needed to do, it completely fell off the rails for me. And I felt like, oh, I've chosen wrong. I should have gone with the bow. I should have gone with the swords or something different. Um, Character creator, didn't love it. I know it is very in-depth and people are going to go a little ham on that. I was disappointed there was no randomized. There didn't really feel like there was a big preset menu of like, hey, if you are bad at this kind of stuff like I am, we're going to give you some pre-built ones. Mm. It felt very much like, good luck, sculpt it. And then, of course, now I've made the ugliest character known to man, (laughs) and I immediately hate it, right? And also, you know, you have two races. You have the cat people and the humans right there. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get deep in the pond and try that. Thankfully, I clicked on the cat guy that looked good enough, and I was like, you know what? You're Tony the Tiger now. You're my guy here. And I, I love hearing that there's cat people yes. and normal people. Cause, and that's all. <laughs> that's it. That's, those are the two main races. Andy, Andy made Garfield, and I was like, what the fuck inspired Andy Cortez to do this? <laughs> this makes a lot more sense yes. now. I love and, that he made Garfield and then couldn't figure out how to start a new game. The best <laughs> so he's trapped as Garfield. <laughs> so freaking funny. It's a very interesting situation of you get introduced into the pawn situation which is you creating your own npc party member and immediately afterwards i press close and (laughs) 
<laughs> Garfield is behind me, right? If I'm Andy, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, now two more pawns get immediately introduced and want to join my party. And it's like, hey, back up a second. I just got my home. I, like, I don't. Yeah. I don't need all of you. Like right now, it's great that I fill out my party, and it is cool. Once we go, but like, I mean, it is instant. You finish it, and that person runs right up to you and says, "You can hire me. Let me be part of your team." And you're like. Okay, I guess. Like, I'm just getting to know Tony here. Like, back up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I am interested in the pawn menu situation where I could get Blessing's pawn or I could get Greg's pawn. Like, I like the idea of, like, looking out to the world and calling them in and seeing what that is. There is a long description of, like, if your pawn goes out and serves, they earn stuff, right? Like, I'm interested in, like, what does that really look like? What does that mean to me? Will someone use Tony the Tiger? Probably not because he looks really bad. But he also has a really bad voice. I, it just didn't vibe with me. And as Blessing said during that preview, it does look a little dated. It looks just doesn't pop. There is no wow factor to this. There is a cool moment, but I'll tell you that opening hour is kind of slow. There's like a cool moment. But other than that, you're kind of like running from point A to point B. He's semi slow. There isn't really much agility to it. There's no flow. You're just kind of mindlessly walking. You're like, ah, I didn't this feel doesn't fun feel moment good. To moment. Yeah. yeah. And again, I, 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 I want to make sure, and I know everybody's listening to this podcast as far they know, but it's like we're talking about early impressions, but they're, for me, so lukewarm in a year, lifetime of games that it's just like, well, I, I, I Ronan's knocking on my door the same way it's knocking yeah. on everybody Even, else. I mean, seven door. hours in, like everything you guys are saying is still true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I think this is going to be a very slow burn. I've talked to, pe to people in my Discord of like uh, people that I know that are in, the, that are reviewers that are also playing the game, and I'm like, Hey, like, are you guys like what's, what's up? And, P and a lot of people I know are fucking loving it, and they are also way further than I am, and further than we are. And so I'm like in that place where I'm like, okay, maybe it's a slow build, and like, and then I I even mentioned that to them, and they're like, oh yeah, no, it's a slow build. And so I'm waiting for it to get there, but I'm shocked by how slow so far it's been to get there, right? And even for me, I'm, I'm waiting to see like how it gets there. You know, I think part of it is gonna be the voc vocations. Well, we've seen the trailer, trailers where they're talking about, oh yeah, like it starts off as a fighter, but then end up as this thing, right? Even in the trailers that um, Barrett was bringing up for B-roll, I'm seeing things where I'm like, oh yeah, I've not seen any of that stuff yet. Mm. And that stuff looks kind of cool. So I want to see what that's about. I've had little hints too of situations where I have upgraded certain skills. I was in the skill tree one of these days and I was like, looking through of things I can add to my character. And one of the, one of the skills was like, you can do like a Captain America shield land oh, where, nice. yeah, where like for me as a fighter, I have a sword and a shield. And like, if I, if I'm like falling from the sky, I can essentially press R1 and it will tilt down and I land on the shield. And I was like, we'll see if I ever use that. And then I am out uh, a few missions later and I come across um, like this, like fucking trampoline. <laughs> yeah, I come across <laughs> the trampoline. I start jumping. Um, no, I see this like big old horse, beast man and we start fighting them and i'm like climbing on him as you do <laughs> and he fucking flings me into the air and i'm like oh fuck i'm i'm, I'm gonna it's die fine. and then i'm like oh wait i have this thing that i learned and so i press r1 and then like i tilt i bring up the shield and tilt forward i'm like oh it's working and then i land and i don't take damage i'm like that was fucking cool like that was a really cool thing but so far those moments have been f so few and far between mm. i think if i can continue playing and getting the new locations allow for way more of those moments, then I can see where the magic comes in. So you just said, if I can continue playing, obviously there's a lot to, to mm -hmm. pull you away. Do you see yourself continuing to play Dragon's Dogma 2 Blessing? Mm. I I think it's going to depend on, honestly, where reviews and other people's opinions are at. If I see enough reviews that are like, yeah, it's cool, like it's fine, and like it is what it is, then I could see myself being like, okay, I think I'm done. Like it is, again, these first 10 hours have been tough in terms of the game giving me that carrot on the stick to want to keep going it really is going to be on other people being like no bless you gotta you gotta keep pushing you gotta keep going that can convince me because right now i at least for me there's not that many games that are, that are on the horizon like solo blade comes out in a month or so and then what there's pepper grinder which i'm sure i'm gonna play and knock out in like small games here and there open roads I guess open roads, but I assume I assume that's gonna be a shorter game Narrative, too. Yeah, it won't be. Bad. Yeah, and so there's not like a big game on the horizon that is gonna pull me away from Dragon's Dogma. I'm like I'm not I'm somebody who's not really looking forward to Rise of the Ronin as much anymore, and so I could see myself going back just out of curiosity to see is it gonna grow? Is I'm am I going to fall in love with this thing if I play put in another five to ten hours? If I do, if like five to ten hours, I think is the max though of like if this doesn't pick up, then I'm probably gonna put it down because. I can only do so much of what I'm getting out of here, but I could see myself going back for more, yeah. Mike, what about you? 
Uh, this is the one I would prefer over Rise of Ronin. I will be returning to this oh, uh, over that. So I will probably drop Rise of Ronin after this and then move right back into this. This will probably get a solid 20 hours out of me because, uh, like Blessing said, I would like to see when we start that snowball effect and it goes downhill and I feel a little bit more capable of what's going on here. It will decide on the story and if I'm falling in love with that story. I think the world will grab me. Like Blessing said, the moment you walk out that first gate, there is stuff to do. There are enemies left and right. I'm banging into things, and that's what I want. But for me personally, I, uh, you know, I, I got to put one down now to go grab another. What about you, Greg? No, I'm on the opposite. Where again, I, I'm. It's not the doors closed. Like, oh no, I'm never. I. But it's like having a setting I'm not super into. Right, even though it's got mechanics I'm into. Uh, is a turn off enough to me where I'm in a similar boat of like, I'd want to see what reviews and our friends and peers who really go through it. But it's the idea that like, I'm having way more fun ro moment to moment with Ronin right now that I'd rather stick. I'd, I'm going to invest my time there. I see if I'm going to get doing another 20 hours into something, it's going to be that because I feel that moment to moment is fun. And that is part of it, but it's such a tough time right now. Right? Because it is well, playing either of these games, any game right now, it's like, well, I should be playing Helldivers. Well, I should be doing some WWE stuff. Well, Ghostbusters is getting new content. Well, Destiny just got Ghostbusters. Like, there's so much going on that I just can't. I, it's two hours of this thing, and I knew that Blessing was playing more. Ever. Thank you so much. Was I supposed to hit the small button or the medium button? I just, the, the middle, the middle button. button. I, the middle. No I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Uh, yeah, like, there's so much going on that I just don't have time to sit there and be like, well... Maybe this is going to pan out, but I don't think it's going to for me. You're bringing, for me. Up, you're bringing up something really interesting here, Greg, that I want to touch on after a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the best polarized shades is a breeze. Get ready for a whole new level of clarity with Shady Rays Pro Polarized Lenses. This lens tech is all about tough durability and vibrant colors that pop. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays. Whether it's Tim looking dope during his Pokemon Go walk, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated 5 stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that is ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. You said... You should be playing Helldivers. You should be playing WWE. You should be playing Destiny's Ghostbusters stuff. What do you mean by that? I mean, our jobs are amazing. <laughs> Fuck off, Barrett. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You see this? No, what was that? He's got Garfield fading in as a ghost. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I mean is, like, our jobs are amazing and fantastic, and the whole point is to, to play games and talk about games, and that gets tricky when your heart is with other games. Like I, mm. I would very much be playing hell divers every night in WWE every night. If I wasn't like, wow, I know we have this show and I know that 
tomorrow for a Thursday embargo, right? We have uh, the Ronin one. We can confirm Ronin's embargo. Yeah, the, the Thursday's embargo for Ronin. But it's like, Ronin, I would uh, keep Ronin out of the conversation. Well, just for this one with Dogma, right? Like, I should play other things so I can be part of these conversations and talk because that's, you know, what we do here, right? But, like, I want to play those other things. Destiny dropping all this Ghostbusters stuff today, right? Like, I'm going to go home and reinstall Destiny. Is, maybe it's still on a hard drive on my my connected hard drive for my PlayStation. I don't know. Uh, and go in and buy that stuff. But even doing that, like, I don't know when I'm going to use that. Because if I was, and I am, so in the Ghostbusters mood, I want to go to Spirits Unleashed who have been teasing the Frozen Empire content. I forget what, what day this week that drops. Like, there's so many things to do at any time with all the different games that I just feel like it's back to an argument I was making on PS, or, uh, Kind of Funny Games Daily today about PSVR 2 where it's just like, yeah, there's 170 games. How many of them are worth your time? What What is worth your time? That changes person to person. Mileage yeah. vary. But I look at Dragon's Dogma, and I'm like, this needed to catch me as off guard as like Assassin's Creed Odyssey did in terms of like, I don't care about it. I, I didn't like Origins. Why would I? Oh, man, Cassandra's great. This feels great. Oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Like, I can't turn away from this, and Dogma didn't do that, right? So then it is that thing of anytime I'm playing a game, and even if it is for content, like... Th these past two weeks are a great example of the days have been so jam packed it kind of funny that there's been no time to play stuff at your desk, which means, okay, you got to play it at home. But when I'm at home, I don't want to play the thing I have to play. I want to play the thing I want to play. And like, that's the yeah. push and pull of it all the time. And so I did a, and Greg way, I touched on this today. Somebody wrote in about, um, Hey, how do you Greg deal with, uh, or how I, I'm the person was like, I'm only, I feel like I'm getting 60 to 40% through most games these days and walking away to go do something else. Like, how do you deal with that? And I'm like, why do you care? You know what I mean? If you enjoyed it for 40% of the game, 60% of the game, great. Like, rolling credits is such a albatross we put on ourselves and not us as, you know, reviewers and conversationalists now and pundits, right? But as gamers in general, where it's like, if you know 60% in, you've had all the fun, this is supposed to be entertainment. This is supposed to be fun. Like, why force yourself to go through something? Yeah. Mike, how do you feel about all this? Uh, there's so many great games, Tim. We live in a great world where there's a lot of games attacking my attention span. And for me, I will always play the games that I want to play. I want to enjoy, right? And here at this job, we take it seriously. We play the games that we're going to have these conversations with. But when I go home, I'm going to play the games that make me smile. I'm going to play the games with my friends. And if it happens to be a great review game that we're doing, I keep the ball rolling. But... I have Final Fantasy right now, and I've fallen in love with that universe, and I want to play that. I want to spend more time with that, right? You can go down the list of me and Andy spending time together playing Valorant, right? Like, these are moments that we share together. We laugh. We have fun. And it is difficult. It does suck of I look at games. And I go, man, I wish I could have had more time on Planet Earth to play that or also call my mom and go outside. <laughs> like, there are a thousand other things. And it does, it hurts a little bit when people get on you where it's like, well, why do you care what I play or like what what I do? Just go have fun. And that's what I always encourage everyone is like your time is precious. I hope you're spending it the way you want and you play the games that you want. I don't worry about what Tim Blessing or Greg are doing on their time. It's like I hope they're having a good time playing games because gosh darn it, you know Snowbike Mike is. I'm having a great time playing games. And there's so many. And so, yeah, for Dragon's Dogma 2, like Greg said, I wish it was more like the when we jumped into Baldur's Gate 3 and it was like, wow, like that moment where it was like, holy cow, like this is going to be cr something crazy, that kind of moment. It didn't feel like that where it was like, hey, we might have to shut everything down and do mm. this. And I think know? to t turn it back to when you just nailed it in your preview, right, it feels so ps 3 e right, mm -hmm. where it is like, it can be, our, I think games could be different at PlayStation 3 because of where games were for PlayStation 3, let alone with the amount of games that were coming off for PlayStation 3, right, where it wasn't being inundated Every, multiple times a week with a game you have to pl have you played this oh my god have you done this oh my god like i was just opening up you know the thing of the game's calendar to look at next week right and it's like all right cool well is south park snow day any good well there's open roads but then pepper grinder looks amazing it's like yeah. that's that's one week i just named three games out of five days you know what i mean like goddamn. that's the yeah. tiring thing about it is that there are so many games right like that's kind of where i come back where it was what greg's talking about in terms of I gotta play what's gonna make me happy and what's gonna like make me enjoy life and enjoy. Video I gotta games. put me first. <laughs> I gotta put me first, Lucian. But like you know, I look at February and February was a month where it was man. I wanted to try out Suicide Squad: Cool Justice League because it was the big game. I wanted to play more. I wanted to play it. Hell Divers too. I only played like three hours on one stream, right? Because it is. Oh, I'm playing Tekken Eight. I'm playing Final Fantasy for review. I'm 30 hours into Persona Three and I'm trying to play that, right? Like I have these games that I both 
want to play but then also you know i feel like for i know for me is like the type of gamer then type of content creator i am slash want to be i kind of want to be on top of the games that i know people want to hear me talk about right and so like that's why i look towards something like a tekken 8 because sure people want to hear me talk about tekken 8 and also i love playing but i love playing tekken 8 final fantasy 7 rebirth that's one that like you know i probably could have waited to play final fantasy 7 rebirth until like later on in the year but also that's the hot game of the moment. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to prioritize this. I'm going to deprioritize something like Suicide Squad. I guess I'll get to Helldivers 2 either later or never. Right now, looking at the next never. month, right? Like, Greg's talking about the next week of video games. And I look at that and I'm like, all right, like, you know, that's not the most blessing week. But also, yeah. like, maybe I'll play those games. Like, again, I expect those games to not be as long. So even if I do play those games, I'm looking at Dragon's Dogma 2 and, like, the sort of uh, free time that I'm having in the weeks coming up of like game releases, either not doing it for me or not, you know, uh, the, the coming out as much as like a blessing of, oh, maybe I'll be able to play enough Dragon's Dogma 2 to be into a new style of game because we're talking about the archaic nature of it. We're talking about how different it is. We're talking about all this stuff. The thing that excites me, if and this, this is me predicting a future that people are already in that we're not in yet, but if the reviews come out and there are final reviews that are like, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, like, this is, you guys should play this, like, there's something special here. That's going to be exciting in the way of, in the way of, like, cool, I've not played a game like Dragon's Dogma 2 that I've fallen in love with, right? And it brings me back to the first time playing Souls games where, you know, I first played Bloodborne and was like, what the fuck? Like, what, what, do, <laughs> what do people like about this thing? Like, I don't understand Bloodborne. I don't, I don't understand Demon Souls. I don't understand Dark Souls. But then once I was able to push through those things that I didn't get because it was different, it was doing a thing that wasn't, you know, along the lines of the action games that I knew, I ended up finding an entire genre that I fell in love with. If Dragon's Dogma 2 is getting those incredible review scores uh, when this comes out, and I look at that and I'm like, all right, cool, let's push through. Let's see if I can fall in love with something new. I think those are the moments that are special for me in video games. But those moments are also kind of few and far between because it is way easier to gravitate towards stuff where it is, oh, I know I'm going to like this, right? I know I'm going to enjoy playing a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or a Tekken as opposed to, like, me playing Dragon's Dogma. So that's why, that's why yeah. I am so... That's why I'm holding out. Like, that's why I'm like, I want to play more. I want to give this a chance because I want to find something new that I can fall in love with. But to Greg's point, right, like, I think a lot of games are only going to get so much of that window because there's so much happening right now and there's so many games to play not all of us have all the time to struggle for tw for 20 hours on a thing yeah and it, for me in a very different but similar vein here uh princess peach showtime's coming out on friday uh we still don't have review codes for that i think they're targeting a different audience uh mm. than the the normal uh thing for it but playing the demo really kind of deflated me like i was like, hoping that i was going to be like so excited to play through this and i'm still planning to play through it because i want to be on top of that type of nintendo game like the like platformers and you know kind of the core mascotty character stuff um like i want to have that experience so i can actually speak authoritatively on like what was good and bad about uh the, the different iterations of them all but i'm just like oh man like i wish i was looking forward to that a bit more than a, than i am I, it does kind of feel like more of a necessity to have to I play have to it right it, yeah. um i also don't think it's going to be that long but and, and hey maybe there's like going to be some surprises in there i am still holding that hope that like there's something there yeah. uh beyond what i have experienced but yeah it's a interesting time for for video games on the flip side of that i was just talking to, to andy about this like coming hot off of uh, prince of persia lost crown obviously i've talked about it how much i love that game we have tales of kanzara coming out in in april and yep. those games look so similar from the demo that i i've loved already of tales i'm like man like there's really 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 cool games that are very similar coming out very close together and i'm excited about that i'm not like oh i'm gonna be burned out like i think that's gonna be oh, like no a, way, a yeah. good uh kind of like like layup to to keep going so some fun things on the horizon but great times plenty of good games yeah mike do you want to bounce out so andy sure. cortez can andy uh, cortez, pop in, come on in. tag team hot tag andy oh. cortez and mike are best friends one wears a coral hoodie, the other's red. Whoa. They're here to have some fun. Holy They're here shit. to talk some games. Andy broke his foot playing basketball games. <laughs> Satan Same is the right true on. lord. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we want to have some, some fun here. <laughs> that aren't some Play that like, black. Play, like, this is the longest it back where Craig is freestyled without mentioning Satan. <laughs> we, got <there. laughs> we got to fix that. We got to remedy that one. Um, we, we didn't know how long we were going to have for a Dragon's Dogma conversation based on, on where we were. So we wanted to tweet out. Uh, some a little ask for some questions from the audience. A little FAQ. So I want to jump into this. Um, 
Radic from CD Projekt Red. Hey, I know oh. him. Yes, it says, where's that new Splinter Cell game? I was literally talking about this to somebody last night. I was talking to another uh, content creator, and they were like, yeah, like, you know, there's a new Splinter Cell, right? And I was like, yeah, it's a remake. He was like, it's a remake? <laughs> like, they've talked so little about it. We've not got, we got, what, what, that initial, was it even a trailer? Was it a video? I thought Ubisoft just was like, hey, we're, yeah, we're making Something it. like that, I thought, right? Yeah, It's yeah. happening. Yeah, thing. I think wasn't it, there the teaser with just the three green lights, or did we all just talk? I about think we that always so bring many I, times. I think that <laughs> that was probably for a Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Got it. Ah. Okay. Yeah. First <laughs> remake, stepping out of the shadows, Ubisoft NA. Two years ago. Wait, there's not. This is not it. Is it? This is from the official Ubisoft uh, North America channel. Ubisoft has greenlit the development of a Splinter Cell remake. So I think this is like old Their footage. Their announcement. Yeah, so this yeah. is old footage announcing they're going to remake this game. So remember. do we see it ever? I don't know. I don't think so. Give up. Go away. Give up. Wow. Get out of the yeah, way. Like oh, yeah, it's the ending. Video. There it is. It was no Metal Gear. We all know it was uh, no Metal Gear. It's where like the biggest mountain in, is in like the timeline. No, the one before that. The, the mountain. Well, there's mountain. a really big one here the, at the end. No, like the bound before that, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when they say the most replayed, yeah. Yeah. Mm, good. I'm back. All right, yeah, they, yeah. they, they did it. They yeah. Did it. <laughs> they did the thing. This, I mean, this always, that's always the question is like, what games are still even in development there that we know of? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like. In the last five years, things have been announced and kind of just, you know, slowly. Ah, they're not paying attention. It's been a yeah. while. <laughs> you brought up Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah, but we all know. Know. We all know that. You brought up Beyond Good and Evil 2. <laughs> that was 2017, 2018? What year was that? I mean, well, they first announced it in like 2007. Oh, yeah. When, but like know. when we saw the that re- cinematic. Yeah. Trailer, you know, that must like, have been 2017. Do you know 2017 was seven years ago? Yeah. You ever think about that? Bullshit. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, bless you bringing that up. I forgot to say this at the top of the show, mm-hmm. but um, you looked over at my my computer and I had Twitter open and I had uh, Andre from Game Explain. He had a tweet that said that had pictures of uh, Wind Waker HD, and you're like, "Oh shit, is it happening?" Mm-hmm. No, it's not happening. Bless. Uh, I just wanted to inform you that as of today, it is longer. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> one of these. It is no. longer these. <laughs> from Wind Waker HD to now than it was from Wind Waker to Wind Waker HD. So, Wait. we're closer to Wind Waker on GameCube than Wind Waker was to fucking South the atomic Paris. bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I hate shit like yeah, I that. I like that there was layers to you being mind blown. Yeah, what, I what, thought you were going to say it's been longer, which might actually be true now that I think about it, but from the original Wind Waker to now, between um, the original Zelda to Wind Waker. Um, um, that must be true. No, though, right? not quite. Not quite. Not yet? Yeah. Wait. Cause it's, it's fuck you're yeah, right. Yeah, no, because it's been Wind Waker. I was I played in yeah at the Antler House in college. Twenty one so. years. That was two thousand three. And then before that, Zelda. Yeah, no, Zelda. Eighty five, right? Fuck. <laughs> was it was Zelda eighty five? Oh my god. Doing the math. Doing the math. It was eighty six. I don't have a math. I guess I could bust that like yeah. no, we're the music guys. Beep, beep, beep. So seventeen Doing years. The math. Seventeen years between uh, Zelda, Zelda and, and, and Wind, Wind Waker. Waker. <laughs> and yeah, between Wind, Wind, Wind Waker and now. <laughs> Yeah, it's been 21 no. years. Oh, my fuck. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry, everybody. Sorry. But where are they? Where are the ports? We're sure, getting them. This is similar, yeah, I, 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 I think I I'll say believe. this fall. I still believe. We'll come out the same day as Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> it, do you think it's a summer direct? Summer? Somewhere in there. Okay. Maybe it might just be a tweet. It might just be a <laughs> something. You know what I mean? I think I feel like August, September. Like if you sign up to out. a newsletter at one point, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it yeah. might go to your spam folder. There's a Nintendo tweet that just says "fuck it." And it's yeah. like, <laughs> screenshots of the boxes. They just pretend it's been here the whole time. Uh, Jim Tacy writes in and says, "I want to say that took some talent to be like." When's the Splinter Cell thing coming out? And you're like, actually, when's Wind Waker coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it. Uh, Jim Tacey writes and says, what game do you want remastered like the recent Aspire Star Wars titles? Like, think just... Oh, where they, rip, they, like, they, rip off, <laughs> they rip off the fucking modern community? That's what and you the want? online doesn't work. Slight up res and, and port. I mean, I want uh, Infamous. I Ooh. want I want Infamous back, and, you know, that was a great PlayStation 3 game. I'd be super excited to see it on a PlayStation 5 remastered whatever just put out again ready to go yeah i mean i haven't kept up too much with the the modding situation with all that stuff so it's like obviously that's all really bad if people are stealing shit yeah. and, and everything 
But I have been saying, like, I'm very impressed with the way the Battlefront looks. looks like, taking yeah. a PS2 game and just making it 4K like this, I'm like, and I know that a lot of it is just emulation, but it's good emulation. It's and there's something about, like, the PS2 generation, when it's given love and care to be up for all the fancy bells and whistles now, it kind of looks awesome in a way that, like, you look at PS1, and that is not the case at all, you know? Yeah, a lot of it is because of those insanely early tiled textures that, you know, here, Mario 64, here's what a mountain is, and it's one flat plane yeah, with JPEG. a tiled, you know, fucking rocky texture or whatever. So that stuff has never really translated super great. Um, I came across a tweet a couple of weeks ago from, remember the kind of problematic, is he problematic, we're not sure guy Elon from the Musk. night of? Uh, the, well, uh, he's pretty bad. I think we know Wait, that. What do you say? Uh, <laughs> the one from the night of. Yeah, no, yeah I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the good night, the long night? The long the oh, game the last that was, night. It was at an E3. Oh, yeah. Everybody popped for it, the and then the night, next yeah. day they're like, "Oh, yo, hold up, he's gamer. He's pro gamer." Get yeah, the last night. And um, I don't think it's a good. Is he good? Is he bad? I think it's he's definitive. Really? Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, it popped up across my FYP Tim because Thorne, I think because you know Twitter just shows you all sorts of random shit. Uh, and he was in his, I guess, in his game engine, putting Metal Gear Solid Two in there. Uh, and it was like, oh shit, this stuff does. Oh no, Metal Gear Solid One. It was like the mm -hmm. the intro, sort of like snowy kind of plane level. And it's like, oh Shadow wow, Wars. like that chopper looks really damn good. And these textures, you're right. Like something about something about that early, you know, generation translates super great if you have of you know visuals that aren't fuzzy and gross. When it's sharp and 60 frames per second, she looks really damn good. Yeah. So I I don't know that I have an example. Though. I feel like so many of the games that I've wanted have, have done that. Yeah. That's being a Nintendo fan. Yeah, I know. God bless. I mean, speaking of which, I guess, well, Mario 64 in that Mario 3D All-Star collection, it... No. What? It did nothing. Yeah, well, yeah. No, I in guess fact, it, it, like, it's... I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so mad at what they fucking did with that. No. Like, I would like to see him do something to it, but at this point, I'm like, I guess I guess it's fine. Like, I don't care. I guess, I, it's, I guess fine. it's fine. Like, I'll play that well, Mario that, 3D All-Star I mean, version. here's the problem, though, bless, uh -huh. is we have seen... The love and care that the PC community has done to Mario 64. The Mario That's 64 true. with ray tracing and full, it is gorgeous. Like, I would have loved Nintendo to do anything close to that, but yeah. they did. The fact it. that Mario Sunshine is not 60 frames per second is unbelievable. Like, it is still 30, and something about that port's just broken than the normal version is, I swear. Ooh. Okay, I got two answers. My first answer is Banjo Kazooie Bloodborne. I <laughs> Bloodborne. <laughs> did. Did they do that to Banjo Kazooie? Mm -hmm. Is that Rare Replay? And even before then, it was Xbox 360 HD. Yeah, well, I, I, well, I guess so. Yeah. I guess Xbox I wanted, I wanted to do. I let do it again, but like 4K. do it again. <laughs> do it again, but 4K this I, time. They did because of Xbox with its like future compatibility oh. stuff. The Xbox One X added that stuff. Looks like you got a busy week I'm, ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, I, got, right? I got some shit to do. Apparently, <laughs> cancel your packs. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> fuck. I, yeah, I'm not gonna get packs, everybody. Uh, my <laughs> other answer. I could, no. You know what? I think they did this too. I was gonna say Soul Calibur too. But they made Soul Calibur 2 HD for PS3. Do it Did again. They? Yeah. You don't huh. remember this? Yeah. No, no. Uh, if you go on Xbox right now, actually, it's the same exact thing as Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Love Fuck. it. You know what? Never mind. I don't have an answer. Wow. Xbox. You got everything you ever wanted. Yeah. Yeah. It was a Dude, time. shout out to Xbox, man. That stuff has always been impressive. And the fact that it just continues to grow and like when they add new stuff, it is like backwards compatible. Incredibly cool. Yeah. Um, the next one here, Sean. Seanald Weatherly writes in saying, there's been a few people, kind of funny peeps included, that have said that they enjoyed Dune Part 1 a lot more on either a rewatch or after having the context of the second movie. Are there any games you guys looked more favorably on after replay, sequels, or in hindsight? It's a, a great question. question. Yeah. I rarely replay a whole I was going to say, this goes back to the topic we were doing before this, right? Where Wait, it's like... <laughs> oh, that. I, I rarely replay. Sorry. I, I thought you did that on purpose. No, I, I didn't. What you did on purpose. I didn't. Whereas just time's so limited, I don't want to go back and replay all these games. You gotcha? You gotcha? You gotcha? Yeah, and I just fucked up. Just fucked up. <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? It's a Friday. There's so little time to play anything, to go back and re replay something and replay something I didn't think was that great. You know what I mean? I'm a replayer. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I replay I games a lot, um, but I, I replay games that I love. I, I, I don't know that I can think of an example of, of something like this. I think the one I can think of is less, like, story context or anything is uh, Burnout 3. Like, Burnout Revenge came out and Burnout Paradise came out, and both of them are great games. Like, Burnout Paradise especially is fucking awesome. But every time I go back to Burnout 3, I'm like, no, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like, you peaked at this. Like, I think that's the only examples I can think of is, like, oh, you peaked with the second title, which I feel like can... 
happen often. NBA Street Volume Two is another one. Yeah. I would say where it's like play NBA Street Volume Three, and I'm like, all right, cool. it's fine. Yeah, but, but then you go back to Volume Two, and it's like, no, nah, y'all had oh. something here. Yeah. I think there's something about maybe games that you didn't vibe with initially, and then maybe revisit it a year later. Uh, so not one. like a full playthrough or whatever, yeah. but something like, you know, I'm going to give this a shot again. It's kind of on the mind, but tag this. It'll be Dragon's Dogma 2 for most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all come back in six months and be like, fuck, we were wrong. Yeah. For me, it was Ghost yeah. of Tsushima. Like that was, that was a game that I thought was like kind of okay at the start. And then I fell off of it and started playing other things. And then when I finally came back to it the next year, I was like, oh, shit, that would have been my game of the year of 2020. I had that a bit with Judgment, where I, I jumped into Judgment. I was like, ah, I'm not feeling this. And then eventually I wanted a detective game, and I restarted Judgment, and I enjoyed that. Andy, I, I had such a, a an Andy weekend for just a, a, a beautiful hour that I swear to God, I've had this hour so many times already. I played about 30 minutes of Ghost of Tsushima, and I played about 30 oh. minutes of Hollow Knight. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> just like, just they're both great. But I'm just like, I don't know why. Like, Ghost just feels intimidating for how big it is. And I'm just like, oh, this is beautiful and awesome. And I'm like, I don't know. And then Hollow Knight, like, something about it. I love the look of it. It's not clicking with me. And I think that you start off so, like, without abilities. And I'm like, I'm sure once I get them, I'm going to be feeling a lot better. But right now, I'm kind of like, ah. Hollow Knight is a, is, a, is a vibes game. Yeah. Like, Hollow Knight is not going to be super upfront with, this new game mechanic does this and that, and you know it's like, it's kind of like the the anti uh, Prince of Persia in that in that sense. But it's about like being there in that space, putting yourself there, maybe eating a eating a little weed gummy. <laughs> you know, get what I mean? into the hall. And I, I have I've never eaten a weed I, gummy. I'm scared of them. So off the question, there are two things that come to mind of uh, God of War 2018 to Ragnarok. I have the thought of like maybe. After playing Ragnarok, I might appreciate 2018 even more, but I also fear that because of like just the way video games work, right? Mechanically, I don't think that Ragnarok is doing everything that the 2018 game is doing, but more. And so I wonder if it would work the reverse way where I play 2018. I'm like, oh, that's cool, but it's not Ragnarok. Right? I've not tested that, but I wonder about that. But on the opposite side, uh, after playing Alan Wake 2, I feel like control would hit even more. I feel like if we went back and played Control, it'd be mm -hmm. like, oh man, okay, we have the context of even, a, of even a wider world here, and you can kind of like apply what's happening to Control and like see certain things that they're setting up here that you know they're doing for Alan Wake Two or they might do for like other future games. I think yeah. that could be a neat experiment. That's a great call, especially because I, the Alan Wake lore is so like, I had to listen to podcasts to even understand <laughs> what the hell is going on. So mm. yeah, I think you're definitely right about that. It's like the a much more complicated version of maybe watching later MCU movies and then going back and going, you know what, Captain America 1, not too bad. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, like yeah. it. And so we, I feel like that happens for us for so many of the yeah. MCU movies. of just like, oh my God, this movie was great. Fair. Yeah, as the, uh, I would say, resident replayer of way too many games. Yes, um, I was trying to think of like if I had a good answer. And I think the best one that I have that I think like just like, a lot of people felt, especially with Suicide Squad, is Arkham Knight okay. of like mm -hmm. uh, of a release uh, of a from a studio at least of like going back and like looking back at like what they were doing nine years ago, which was like really impressive for twenty fifteen of all the stuff. I know it's hotly contested of like the the Batmobile and stuff, but still like that game it's fucking gorgeous even nine years later. It's crazy. So that's the best answer I have for that. That's a good one. Waluigi himself writes in. <laughs> Uh, with Final Fantasy VII Remake being a three-part AAA trilogy, what game that you loved growing up would you want to get the same treatment? I've thought about this a lot, playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, of like how special it is that we're getting something that, sure, right now might feel incomplete because it is, but it's like when it's all done, we're going to have gotten so much of this world on such a crazy scale. And my answer is pretty obvious if anybody knows me, but it's Pokemon Red and Blue. Like, imagining them remaking that in a giant multi-part thing, potentially, going through that story with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth levels of production values, completely change what the game is. You know, change yeah. the combat, change it all, but, like, go back to it's 150 of them. Make, like, I want cutscenes, I want voice acting, I want it to be, like, taken epic. more seriously yeah. and epic as hell. Like, b make the battles in stadiums and the gym fights feel like boss fights you know that would just be like the dream does it need to be three games i don't necessarily think so but like i do feel like to do it justice in the way i'm talking about like i don't want it to just be go to the next town do the thing i like let it feel like the the anime a bit more that's such a great call yeah i'm, I'm kind of blanking on that's a tough question to right i feel like final fantasy 7 such a touchstone uh for so many people and i'm not the guy who wants 
longer three part games. If I can do a smaller one, right? Like I would say, and I, this isn't, isn't even far back enough, but I want Metal Gear Solid remade. I want Blue Point mm-hmm. to do that. I want someone to do that and tackle that. And I'd be way more excited for that than I am Metal Gear Solid Delta, which I'm still excited for, right? Yeah. I feel like you could do with Ocarina of Time. Like, I think Ocarina of Time has such a iconic story that has those twists, that has those big moments, and, like, has is it's divided up in structure in a way where I can easily see a game, or I can easily see, yeah, a, an Ocarina game ending right where you have that, like, was it a time skip? God, it's been so long that I forget exactly how it went, but, like... Yeah, you the, the Temple of Time, remember? Yeah, 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 where, like, that happens, and it is, all right, cool, like, you're gonna have to get the rest of the next game or whatever. I think you could do something really cool there. Link to the Past would be something like that as well. Mm. Um, I, 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 we haven't seen I, a remade, you know? I would hate it. I would hate that, honestly. Because that's like five hours of, like the, of Ocarina of Time. Five yeah, oh, now, and I'm just, I, now I'm just thinking about things that's looking big bigger. And that's a big reason of why I disliked Remake. Remake is way too padded. It's way too much of like what was a seven, eight hour portion of the game turned into a 35 hour portion. Like, ugh. Yeah, I'm just thinking about bigger and badder, you know? Like, yeah. I'm not even necessarily thinking on the... Make what, this what game, it already was. Make this three thirty-hour experiences. Yeah, you know? like that, I don't know that there's any game that I, yeah. I feel like. Because even thinking like Fallen Fantasy X is another game that I want given this treatment, and that I want is one experience. And I feel like that game is way more linear than Seven is anyway, so that could make sense. Uh, but take it to the bank, bless. We're getting Ocarina remake. Do you one part or um, I think multiple, it's multiple one parts. part, one part, and I think we get it in the next three years. Wow, I hope yeah. so. I would like that. I think it's happening. Um. Show people what a real Zelda game looks like. What does that mean? Oh, I broke my sword. <laughs> Don't you love Breath of the Wild? Oh, I'm up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm down in the ground. This motherfucker was like in the beginning parts of Tears of the Kingdom being like, well, what's our game of the year that's not going to be Zelda? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an amazing game. <laughs> it's top 10. Uh, Nathan Maloney says, what are some hot fire, hot take, dream predictions for this upcoming summer season of showcases? Project 007, insert Marvel game here. Thanks for all you do. 007 is a good pick here, right? Like, that's that's a game that it's due, you know? I feel like Indie was the other game that similarly was like, all right, we've heard about this big license project. It's kind of a very exciting idea of machine games making an Indiana Jones game, yeah. having uh, IO make a 007 game, and yeah, it's time to see that, right? Well, think so? the old studio yeah. when that got announced, or when was no, that? When 007? No, no way. No. I just I, I feel like it's myself. too soon for 007. I, o I was, agree with that. Io was work from home era. Yeah. Because it was soon after uh, Hitman, Hitman 3. 3. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. making the Blessing. That was like the first couple Blessing Show episodes. Yep. We did the, the first one. It might have been the first one. We did the James Bond episode. Um, yeah. Hitman 3 came out January 2021, I believe. And so I, I guess it 2020 to, was uh, 007. That was, was when they announced it. Yeah. What month? Yeah. What month? Because it could have been early. I feel yeah. like it. Feel like it may it was, have been it was early. February. Because I remember myself like standing next to my old desk. If it's February, then I'll give you the rest of this coke. Oh, man, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's really. I good. hope I'm right. Yeah, no, it's pretty. Hope good. it's January, February. Waiting with bated breath. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm November. Like November. November. Damn, you're fucked. <laughs> Shit. <Yeah. laughs> Let me chug this. I don't know, but I feel like I O like the way that they've pumped out Hitman content. Like, I I think it's time. Okay. Yeah. I hope it's time. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah, insert Marvel game there. I think there's a lot to move on that, right? I, are, when do we get to see Wolverine? Uh, when do we get to, to see this Captain America Black Panther game? When do we see the Iron Man game? When do you see the Black Panther game? Like, there's like all these things that are gestating, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Teases are uh, bound to happen eventually. Do you think it's Iron Man time? No, I bet it's more Wolverine time. I th- I, uh, really? Why don't you? No. Why not? I, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like Iron Man is closer than Wolverine. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I bet you'll play Wolverine before you play Iron Man. Mm. When, wait, how far do you think Iron Man is? No. Nah, because like, we've seen the timelines for Wolverine. It seems like it's... 2025, right? No, I think... I, I, what I saw was beyond that. Again, was it like, 2026? Like, yeah, 2026, 2027. Oh, I, I, I thought I could have sworn it was 2025, 2026. I, I can listen. I, mean, I, can, these are I, all I, can, like, I can go on Reddit right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember it wasn't 2024. Yeah, I knew it wasn't 2024. I'm not saying it's coming out this year. I, I would say, though, Jeff wants something big at SGF. I'm sure Insomniac would like to be like, yo, this fucking sucked that our game looked like that. We'd rather give somebody a taste to get it excited. The big question, I think, mm. what, what are you shaking your head at? I, like, I kept saying it popped up July 26, 2024, and I was like, that can't be right. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, it's not moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
keep f- looking for that. Find me that date on what they said. Uh, but again, I think you show it if it's 2025. Show what Wolverine looks like to some respect. Hmm. You're, the point of the, them wanting to own the narrative a bit more does make me have some type of faith in that, but I think that's a PlayStation showcase thing that I don't know that we're going to be getting this summer. Well, again, we just said summer, so I was... Yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I apologize. Yeah. Take it back. I understand what you're saying now. Um, the, I, Iron Man's interesting to me because like, I keep waiting for that game to just be canceled straight up. Yeah, like, oh, we're never going to see it, but like the fact that it hasn't and it survived the them canceling all the other stuff and EA being like, we're not doing the license stuff anymore or whatever, like... They specifically said that is still happening. So I'm like, I I feel like we're going to have to get that game at some point. And I, I I do. It gives me hope because I after the respawn Star Wars cancellation, you know, you got to assume that that game was maybe in a weird spot that maybe they just couldn't quite find the right formula. And so it warranted being canceled. So Iron Man not being canceled gives me hope that they see promise in it, that it's in a spot that, oh, maybe this is going to actually turn out really, really great. But on the flip side of that, I think, like, are there contractual obligations yeah. that requires them to release an Iron Man game? Um, but yeah, that is... That that game, along with, like, I think it's just, like, when we would see early MCU lineup stuff, and you're like, oh, they're never going to make that movie. Like, that's kind of the same sort of totally. vibe I get from this, you know? Well, it's because they just keep the putting Craven up the concept movie. art, right? Where it's just like, here's the logo, and it's the chest. You, what do you got for me on this? We're getting crazy. Uh, 2026. Year. 2026. Okay. Yeah, Grain of Salt, because it's from, of like, course, leaked from a leaked information. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Getting a Craven movie. That's bullshit. We're getting a Craven movie in just a couple months, man. Yeah. That's outrageous. It really is. You know what else we're getting this year? Venom 3. Venom The Last Dance Insane. is what they're calling it. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely wild. <laughs> Can you believe there's not another Spider-Man movie announced? You know what I mean? There's still no fucking movie. They're re-releasing all the old ones, I though. Know. Kind of cool. Kind of exciting. They, they did got- it on a Monday. <laughs> yeah, what? Everybody's like, what? It's so Spider Monday, it's everybody. Sp- Spider-Man, yeah, Spider-Man Monday, Sandy. You Spider-Man never heard Monday. of that? Spider-Monday. Spider-Monday. He hates Mondays and loves lasagna. He's Spider-Man. <laughs> so the, the question is just pie in the pie in the sky like hot take uh, predictions yeah. for summer. <laughs> this is literally going to go against, I think, a pizza bite we might have made. But Astrobot, it's time. <laughs> Let's see that little fucker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> I, I would love that. <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't but, know why I said that aggressively. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below what you hope to see this summer. Uh, and until next time, I love you all. Goodbye. Bye.